This general biology course was developed as part of the Open Course Library. The Open Course Library had several goals, including uh, lowering textbook costs for students, uh, utilizing and developing open education resources, and uh, to utilize universal do design to improve accessibility. This particular course was developed using backwards design. The learning outcomes were the beginning. From there, assessments were developed in order to as determine whether or not students have met the learning outcomes. And then finally, the learning activities were developed in order to help students do well on the assessments and ultimately demonstrate that they met the learning outcomes. Within the course, you'll see various uh, components that will uh, come in handy. One is the course syllabus. This provides you with just about all of the information that you need in the course. It starts out with a table of contents at the top, which allows you to link down to various aspects of the course. Um, say rescheduling exams. You've got all the information that you need right there. Another important component of uh, the course is the calendar tab. The calendar tab lets you know when uh, various components in the course are assigned and when they'll be due. The most useful of the tabs in the course is the lessons tab. In the lessons tab, you'll find uh, the various weeks of the course, and within those weeks, we've got a set of learning activities. In some cases, you'll see a pre-assessment at the beginning. Generally, at the top, you will also see a list of learning outcomes for that week's um, learning activities or lessons. You'll also see some recommended reading and because of that, uh, that lower textbook cost uh, option with this course design, students were given the opportunity to purchase whatever textbook they want, new or used, as long as it had uh, certain con or met certain content criteria. So uh, it's not possible to actually assign page numbers or chapter numbers because of differences in textbooks but the content is generally pretty similar. So there is a list of uh, content reading, which generally corresponds with a chapter uh, usually found in the textbook. Okay, you may also find video lectures and some online activities through the Open Learning Initiative at uh, Carnegie Mellon University. Okay, at Carnegie Mellon, they've developed a uh, modern biology course, which is integrated into this course. Uh, when you go to their website, following the link here, you would log in, and that will bring you to what they call the syllabus, which is essentially an outline of content. Each of the units is assigned at various points in the course. Uh, you go into those units and some background information is provided and you move your way through and you'll come across some formative assessment. Assessments that are provided to or um, meant to provide you with feedback uh, without really being graded on it in many cases. Uh, you will um, complete short little quizzes, and it'll give you the opportunity to go back and revise your answers if it's clear that you didn't really understand the concept. Um, at the end of the units um, are occasionally quizzes. Those quizzes for, um, for this particular course will be used as an opportunity for extra credit. That will be your only opportunity for bonus points in this course. And many of the video lectures that are used in the course are from the Khan Academy. You'll find links.
links with particular topics and um, Sal will go through and tell you about those topics in biology. Each of these uh, little Khan Academy uh, video lectures runs roughly about 20 minutes or so. You'll also find problem-based learning as a component of the course, or PBL. And the purpose of PBL is to get you to really start constructing the information yourself. Um, research and education suggests that um, actually just simply passively receiving information from a lecture is a relatively ineffective and short-lived way to learn. Uh, it's much more uh, effective when students are constructing their own knowledge, piecing together uh, components of the biology content in their own way, incorporating their previous understanding and addressing some of the misconceptions or misunderstandings that they come in with. In problem-based learning, you're working in small groups of students and the instructor is there to essentially facilitate your learning. But the student is working as students are working as a group in order to ultimately develop a solution to the problem that's given. Okay, at the beginning of each of these problem-based learning assignments are a set of learning objectives. You're given a set of skills objectives, the things that uh, we hope that you learn to do uh, in the process, and some content objectives, um, some biology-related concepts that we hope you understand, and some things that we hope that you're able to do with that. Okay, then you're provided with some background information, and generally that background information is um, vague and not particularly detailed, and that's intentional. Uh, it requires you to dive into the information to solve the problem yourself. You are, however, given questions to consider which are intended to help guide you uh, in the right direction, and the instructor is really there um, to make sure that you are headed in the right direction. Kay? If you've got some serious misunderstandings or are headed off in a tangent, um, that's a bit far from the intent. Uh, the instructor is there to, to get you back on track or to help you find information if you're having difficulty finding it. Okay. You'll also find a discussion thread with each of these PBL assignments. Okay. You're working in groups of small student or small groups of students. Um, so there are several groups within the course you would go into the discussion thread for your particular group. And this allows you to share information with your group, ask questions of members in your group while you're outside of class. It also allows me to participate providing feedback when I can. Generally, you'll be discussing these PBL problems to a large degree within the classroom. And I'll move from group to group to see how things are going. But this discussion thread allows you to continue the conversation outside of class. You'll also find laboratory exercises within each weekly set of lessons. Some of the laboratory exercises are um, guided, very cookbook-like in nature. Those are largely uh, to provide you with the skills that you need within the laboratory. Uh, you're also given more inquiry-based labs where you're essentially given a problem, a set of materials, and you're asked to design a, an experiment, run an experiment, and interpret the results of that experiment in order to address a question. Okay, laboratory exercises will be printed for you and provided in class. However, they're posted uh, online in order to give you an idea of what you're doing in class that week. Okay, the other thing that you'll come across in these lessons are celebrations of knowledge. Okay, these are the summative assessments that are used to evaluate whether or not you've learned the material. 
So these uh, generally cover, oh, about two weeks worth of uh, material. So this is a pretty standard test. Um, essay questions, short answer questions, occasionally multiple choice questions. So that's what those celebrations of knowledge are. Okay, so lessons 10 provide you each of those weekly components.